What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Tometan 12 year old. Stick around. So we've got a Tomatin with us today. I'm looking at the 12 year old. Tomatin is a Highland distillery and it's one that doesn't seem to get a lot of attention. It doesn't seem to get a lot of love. Um, yeah, pretty under the radar stuff. Even from me, I'll admit I've only had a handful of their expressions. All of which I only tried over the last maybe year or two. Prior to that in my 10, 12 plus years of drinking whiskey, I don't think I'd tried a single Tomatin, at least none that I can remember. Um, but recently I have picked up stuff like the 18 year old. I've tried a couple versions of their cast strength 12 year old and yeah, they, they can make some decent stuff. Actually, you know what? I'm wrong. I did try the 14 year old Tawny port finish ages ago. Um, I don't remember if I liked it or not, which may or may not say something about it, but yeah, I definitely have had tomatins prior to this. So, okay, forget that bit. Anyway, our 12 year old here is their youngest age stated expression. It kicks off their age stated range. I don't think they have a 10 year old. They do have a cheaper whiskey out there called the Legacy. That one's a no age statement. I haven't tried that one. Uh, but yeah, anyway, our 12 year old here has been matured in both bourbon and sherry casks. Now, I'm not sure if this is a sherry finished expression or if they just kind of combine bourbon and sherry barrels together. My guess would be the latter, but there's not a lot of production information. So anyone's guess, if you guys know anything about that, do let me know down in the comments. But yeah, Tomatin is just, it's a distillery that I don't know much about. So I'm happy to have another expression that I can explore get to know them a little bit better so let's do that let's jump into our review see what our whiskey is all about and in the meantime if you could kindly leave a like down below that'd be greatly appreciated entry level expression here definitely not a craft whiskey our abv is 43 percent it's probably chill filtered although i couldn't find anything about that and we do have caramel colorant in here so not ideal So we have our unnatural color here. I should like Tomatin bottles more than I do. I tend to prefer like minimal label space and more exposed glass. But these ones, I don't know, I think they're decent. They're modern looking, they're slick enough, but I just think the look is okay. Uh, our green label here is so-so. Presentation score may be three and a half out of five. Nothing here about color or chill filtration, but of course there wouldn't be. We do have Mit Faberstoff on the back. Uh, that complies with a few European countries that require you to declare if you have any unnatural additives to your product, which this does. Uh, we have some tasting notes on the front, not much in terms of production details. So our info here is really basic. The look is okay. I did not add water. Let's try the nose. So we have sherry in here. It's not super forward, like it doesn't dominate. I feel like some refill casts were used here. We have uh, fruits, it's very fruity. Red fruits, yellow fruits, fermented fruits. We've got candied apples, we've got pears, lots of pears. Definitely some caramel, but like there's kind of a cheap artificial sweetener note in here. Now the palette. Hmm. All right. Um, not much in the way of texture here. Sherry, light sherry again. Refill cast maybe. Um, there is some white pepper, a little bit of ginger. Definitely some honey. Lots of nuts in this. Cinnamon. And a touch of chocolate. And now the finish. Okay. So nutty, lots of nuts. Um, more fermented fruit, like fermented pears maybe. We have some honey, uh, some lingering spices, short finish. So part of the problem I've had with Tomatin in the past is it's been hard for me to sort of figure out their house style, figure out what it's all about. Uh, they have a lot of sherry influenced whiskeys, port influenced whiskeys, and it's been kind of hard to grasp what the distillate is doing underneath all of that cast play. I do think our 12 year old here gave me a better picture of things. 
for me, this is a very fruity distillate. It's very fruit forward. I kept on getting like fermented fruity notes from it. Um, and it's also still a very light distillate. So I think it would be easily overwhelmed by overly active casks. Uh, but as a distillate, um, I'm not impressed. Honestly, so far, I do prefer the expressions that are more cask forward, that are more cask dominated. Uh, this one where we have less cask domination, our spirit does talk more, and I don't think that's the whiskey's benefit. Um, you know, I think the casks that they used for this were quite tired. Again, possibly refill. Both the bourbon and the sherry cask don't really have much to say here. The flavors they impart are kind of flat. So overall, I have to say I'm pretty underwhelmed with this whiskey and you know, it doesn't do anything outright bad. It's not horrible. It doesn't really do anything wrong. It's not offensive. Uh, it's a functional 12 year old scotch with scotch flavors and sherried influence. We do have a delicate fruity character in there, but it's boring. It's more than boring. In fact, it's dull, it's generic, it's forgettable. You know, bad whiskeys I'll actually remember. They'll actually stand out in my mind. This one isn't interesting enough to be memorable. It's just there. Uh, it's one of those whiskeys that's so generic that I'm actually mad at it for being this boring. The flavors in here are typical and kind of tired. Uh, I guess the closest this one gets to having like a, a distinguishable character would be those like fermented fruity notes in here, which can be interesting, I'll admit. Um, the sweetness in this has like this cheap artificial sweetener note going on. I think the casts are very meh. Uh, our watery texture doesn't help. There's really not a lot going on here. My score here is going to be 79. I think this whiskey could work if all you want to do is have a casual sipper and just kind of turn your brain off. Like I said, we do have scotchy flavors in here and there's nothing especially offensive. But if you want something that's interesting or challenging or unique or vibrant, look somewhere else. And listen, I know it's not a terrible distillery. I know they do have some good releases. I've got a bottle of the 18 on the go right now. Spoiler alert there, I do quite like it. I'll be sure to review it eventually. I've had a couple versions of their cast strength 12 year old. Some of them are stronger than others. Um, it's not a great whiskey, but it's solid. Certainly better than this. And you know, I'm glad I tried those other ones first because if you gave me the 12 as an introduction to the distillery, I'm not sure how much more I'd want to explore. Anyway, you guys might like this one. Um, if you want something cheap and mindless, sure, you can try it out, see where you land on it. Personally, I think there are much better options to be had in a similar price bracket. Go for a Glen Gary 12. Hell, you can go for a Glen Livet 12, uh, Glen Grant 12. There are definitely better options out there, so personally, I'd skip this one. So for a 12-year-old whiskey, this one's actually surprisingly affordable. It usually comes in 700 ml bottles. I have a liter bottle and even this was cheaper than the majority of entry-level 12-year-olds. So I really can't fault it for price. It's very affordable. I just wish it was a better whiskey. But because this is a whiskey that I don't really connect with, even though it's quite cheap, I'm not really interested in buying another bottle. That being said, I'm not going to come down on it for price either. It's a fair price. Um, so it's really risk-free if you do want to check it out. I find it to be annoyingly generic, but you might feel differently. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, subscribe, and that's always appreciated. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried R to Matin 12 here? Did you like it? What did you think of it? Let me know down in the comments. And also, down in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.